This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and I'm here to answer a very common query which I get. So in some soft cataracts, we try to attempt a direct chop technique and the nucleus is too soft and we are unable to get a hold and the chop fails. Now how do we cope out in such a situation? So let me take you through one such case here where the looks can be deceptive. This is a 60 year old diabetic patient who has come for cataract surgery. The nucleus has a brownish tinge but that's what deception is all about. The little bit brownish tinge what is there in the lens even I thought it's uh, probably a grade 3 nucleus but once I did the rexis and the hydrodissection I couldn't do hydrodelineation in this case because the nucleus was a little bit brittle and usually in such diabetic cataracts you don't get the hydrodelineation right at all. There is no separation of endonucleus epinucleus. The entire mass is crumbly and uh, difficult to get the endonucleus ring. So I still not realized that the nucleus can be very soft. Typically as is customary the superficial epinucleus is removed. Uh, now is the time to go ahead and do the direct vertical chop. These are the settings and I have used a very low power so that I can get some hold. So let's see how things turn out. I'm using very little amount of uh, power to bury. As soon as my chopper decides to go ahead and uh, do the chop, the grip is lost, I cannot do this. I try it at a different place, but the result is the same. The nucleus is too soft and squishy and I just don't get a hold. So at this stage, the quick way is to change my plan to perform a stop and chop technique. So I change my settings to a sculpt mode where I'm going to use torsional energy to create a thin long trench. That's what I'm trying to do here. So this basically is a cortical cataract. It's very crumbly in nature. Let us see whether creating a trench helps us to divide the nucleus into two bigger fragments which can then be pulled out of the bag and then emulsified easily. That's my strategy here. So I'm just stroking the nucleus so that I get a decent enough depth. And once I thought this is good enough, I'm going to try lateral separation. So as expected, the two heminuclei can be separated at the peripheral part. The central part is too gummy and it's refusing to split at the center. But nevertheless, we have two smaller fragments on one heminuclis. So in the other one, I just want to go ahead and try to divide this. The chopper is placed slightly to the periphery, that's towards the equator, something like a modified horizontal chop, so that this being an extremely soft cataract. Well, it gives me a partial chop in the sense the nucleus is separated in the peripheral part, but the central sticky posterior plate still stays in. Since the at least the superficial part is broken, I can hold it, grab it, flip each of these fragments out of the bag and then remove. Of course, the posterior plate is still going to remain inside the bag. But what it does is it's sort of a debulking of the nucleus. And once we debulk the nucleus, there's enough space for us to maneuver. And the second heminucleus management becomes extremely easy. So I'm just trying to show it in slow motion now. Now, this is the remaining heminucleus. Where do you hold it and flip it out of the bag? So let me demonstrate here. If I hold at the central part, I'm not able to get a good grip in spite of using a very low power. And even if I get a good grip, I'll not be able to flip it around. So I'm just throwing at you know central and paracentral areas. The trick here is to go ahead and hold it at the edge of the heminucleus. It's a far end. Hold it at the edge of the nucleus. Again using extremely low power. Ensure that the tip is occluded. And once the vacuum builds, you are going to just flip it out of the bag. So holding it at the edge is the secret. Once you hold it and flip it out of the bag, then emulsifying this heminucleus is a child's play. Bringing it out of the bag is the trick and the trick is always avoid holding it at the center because the two peripheral ends of the heminucleus will face a resistance from the rexus which acts like a barrier. So I'm going to hold one end then flip it out it's going to be much more easier. In this case the rexus had to be slightly bigger but unfortunately I didn't anticipate that uh, this uh, nucleus management could be tricky because I was not expecting a, a crumbly cortical cataract. So these are some of the lessons which we learn along the way. To summarize, in a situation where you encounter extremely soft crumbly cataract like this and it's refusing to crack, 
then immediate strategy should be to convert to a stop and chop technique. Try to create a long thin trench and then try to separate and if they get separated, pull each of the fragment out of the bag and then emulsify. There's no need to divide it into four fragments. However, if we are unable to divide them into two heavy nuclei, as it happened in this case, the trick is to debulk the nucleus first and then reduce the size of the nucleus. After that, the remaining part of the nucleus you can hold it at the edge and then uh, using just the vacuum flip the entire endonucleus out of the bag and then emulsify. This would help us to deal with such tricky situations of soft cataracts. Uh, thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.